So welcome to our King's College Ericsson 5G Tactile Internet Lab. You're one of the first to, to see essentially what we have here. And I want to introduce you to some really cutting edge equipment here in telecoms, robotics and artificial intelligence. So first piece I want to show you is what we refer to the software defined radio. That is very powerful MIMO equipment here which we can completely reconfigure at will. So we can put Wi-Fi on here, we can put 3G on here, 4G and we hope to put a lot of the 5G features on that software defined radio here. It is very unique because it's the only university equipment which was allowed by our regulator off so the equivalent of FCC in the United States, to be used for the TV white space trial. So literally Dr. Oliver Holland, uh, who isn't here at the moment, normally is using that type of equipment, these antennas here, the cables, crawling on the roofs of London and measuring spectrum in real time, occupancy, how much is used, when, where and how. And he then assembles all the data and, and packages it on for Ofcom to evaluate whether the TV white space is a good, good thing to go for. So that is essentially our, our radio edge here. We also have a pretty powerful equipment here, which is our software defined networking equipment. So we have um, cloud computing stuff here. We have completely reconfigurable routers, which we use to test a lot of the SDN concepts, right? So NFV can be tested here. We, we, what we're really planning to do is, is to connect all that SDN here to all our SDR equipment and have a complete software software chain. So the dream is uh, that you would sit somewhere on a coffee table and reprogram the entire country. That's what we want to do in 5G. Commoditize the hardware and give the value add in the software. And the software we start to understand now needs to be end to end. That's really important because otherwise you get frictions between those segments. Right, so once we have that com connected, we want, we want to come up with what we call now the skills net internet. So the idea is essentially to transmit touch remotely. No matter where you are, I can touch you, I can do things, okay? Imagine our best engineers, Vauxhall engineers, being able to repair a car somewhere else on the planet. Our best uh, surgeons in, in, at King's College London doing an operation uh, in Sierra Leone. Or somebody teaching me how to paint or I'm teaching somebody how to play the piano. So that is the type of stuff we want to do. But to transmit touch, in, in contrast to video, you need to transmit not only the action, but also the reaction. That's really important. And if that reaction does not come within a millisecond, you start to feel bit dizzy. We have been programmed over millions of years, essentially, the action and reaction come very close together. Now let me calibrate that one millisecond. So one millisecond speed of light uh, over air is about 300 kilometers. That is 150 kilometers to go and 150 kilometers to come back. Now in reality we communicate via fiber. It's another 30% down. Uh, in reality we use real network equipment. That's another 80% down. So how do you build a global internet, an internet which allows me to transmit skills uh, when actually my reach, technically speaking, is only about maybe 10 kilometers. So that's what we do here and we believe just making the network quicker, so making building a tactile internet is not the only answer. We need more and uh, we believe that we need artificial intelligence at the edges able to predict our movement. So when a surgeon performs a surgery, it's an, uh, a surgeon is an animal of habits. It would just perform exactly the same movements been doing before. And we're able to predict a lot what is happening on the surgeon's side, which buys us essentially these 50 to 100 milliseconds to get around the planet. Yeah, the gaming industry starts to use that. And we want to replicate that as part of this tactile internet. You also need very advanced uh, haptic edges. You need essentially stuff where you can do, uh, control things. So I want to show you something we've been doing here with our robotics department. So you see here a, uh, a phantom. So that phantom would allow you to physically manu manipulate things somewhere else on the planet. So that could be literally physically or digitally. So you're controlling things. Could be the knife of a surgeon, uh, could be something else where you paint, etc. Um, you're transmitting that and you get the force feedback. So when I hit virtually or really the paper somewhere on the other side, I would feel that here. You can't see that of course on the video, but I do feel that. So we can now inject delay 
delays, we can inject packet outages, and suddenly you end up uh, understanding that you really need about, you know, five, maybe 10 milliseconds delay end-to-end -end is the maximum you can tolerate. Anything beyond that totally destabilizes the system. So it would start doing funny things which I cannot control. So therefore, uh, to have a very low delay is utmost important. But it's not the only one. So if you really want to commoditize the edges uh, to really enable the scalability as we have seen with the real internet, you need to make things in a really standardized way. So we want to introduce something totally novel, the standardized um, haptic codex. So the way how we transmit touch, how we encode it and how we reproduce that should be standardized. And touch, the haptic signal, can be decomposed into kinesthetic signals, mechanical signals, uh, six degrees of freedom per joint, okay? And um, tactile signals. So this is literally the touch we are feeling and there are loads of little sensors here within our fingers and there are millions of those. And it, tell, it turns out that, and that is very pioneering research coming just out of King's College, uh, it turns out that everybody of us feels touch totally differently. It's because the mechanics of each finger is different and uh, it turns out touch is nothing else but the detection of mechanical waves through your tissue. Different fingers, different perception of touch. Now, how do you standardize that? That's a big challenge in head, ahead and that's what we're trying to do. Is standardize touch, standardize the, uh, the network, the low delay, delay network, standardize the artificial intelligence, package it all together and come up with this internet of skills which hopefully will totally change this planet by 2030.